What a disaster last night was for the Miami Dolphins. This is Dolphins Today by Chat Sports. I am your host, Nick Roloff, as Miami falls to 1-3 and three on the season after a 31-12 loss at home to the Tennessee Titans. And there is a lot to talk about in terms of its organization. Mike McDaniel, Chris Greer, and the rest of this roster will be discussed on today's video. But make sure you are subscribed to the channel because even though the Dolphins season might be hanging in the balance and teetering towards being over, we are still going to be here for daily content and live shows every single week for every single game. And I want to win our sub battle against Steelers Talk. Both channels here now at 61K subscribers. So it's a battle climbing and climbing here at Chat Sports. Help us take down the Steelers. All right, the first overreaction Monday, and I know it's Tuesday, but it's always overreaction Monday in my mind. Fire Mike McDaniel. Is that something that should be done at some point in the season? I'm going to give it two fins. And listen, it's not a small shred of truth, but people are talking. And that's what two fins means here at the channel. Because what I've seen from the Miami Dolphins over the past three games, and I know two has only been out for the last two, but... If you look at what this Dolphins team was doing with Tua in that Thursday night football game against Buffalo, it still wasn't pretty, and they clearly were not prepared for that game. It's been an embarrassing coaching display for Mike McDaniel. Honestly, all four games this season, but it's really just been heightened even more over the past two weeks against the Seattle Seahawks and Tennessee Titans. Like, regardless of with Tua or without Tua, we've seen other coaches in the National Football League win games with their backup quarterbacks. The Carolina Panthers won a game with their backup quarterback. And you might say, yeah, they were playing the Raiders. Yeah, the Titans aren't much better, folks. Also, Mike McDaniel has been going up against over the past two weeks first-time head coaches and Mike McDonald and Brian Callahan. And he got owned, schooled by the two of them. That is not a good sign when your third-year head coach, who just got extended before the season till 2028, gets out coached by two first-year guys in back-to-back -back weeks. And the numbers are startling when you have Tua in comparison to without Tua. And it really asks the question, who's responsible for this offense? Because when you have Tua Tungavaloa in at quarterback, the Dolphins, it's fun. It's awesome. Really solid record. Averaging 26 points per game. Throwing the ball through the air with absolute ease. But then without Tua, Mike McDaniel simply can't win ball games. Can't score the ball. Can't move the ball. At what point? Is Tua Tungavaloa the offense for Miami? Because a lot of people have said over the past three years, discrediting Tua, that Mike McDaniel made him, and Tyreek Hill made him, and anybody can succeed in this offense. Well, it certainly doesn't look that way, and it really looks like Tua is pushing this offense and pushing this team. Kind of how it feels right now, is it? And I'm not going to sit up here and say that Tua is a top five quarterback. I don't think that in the slightest. But do I think he's the top half quarterback in football? Absolutely. And I know the injury history is a concern, and especially a concern moving forward with how you build this roster and how you go forward in this organization. But when you look at the numbers with Tua and without Tua, it is a little bit concerning to say, well, maybe Tua is the guy that we should be keeping over Mike McDaniel. I got more thoughts on the matter here, but I want to know your thoughts. Who is more responsible for this Miami Dolphins success over the past two seasons with Mike McDaniel? Type MM if you think it's Mike, or type TT if you think it's Tua. Pin comment on today's show. So if you get hit with a YouTube ad break, let it play. Scroll down and answer today's pin comment because I do want to know your thoughts. Another reason why I am a little bit more concerned on Mike McDaniel is that his play calling has been absolutely horrific this season. And I get it. Tyler Huntley probably had a very dumbed down play calling sheet yesterday and really didn't have the full playbook at his disposal only being here for two weeks but some of these play calls and decision making um, from Mike McDaniel just simply wasn't good and when you look specifically at fourth down yesterday and on the season through four games the Miami Dolphins are one of 11 on fourth down this season they're lucky it's not the worst in football because there's three teams out there that have yet to convert a fourth down and likely haven't gone for it 11 times but what were the two plays last night seriously the Dolphins were 0-2 on third, fourth down yesterday. Both were fourth and ones. What were the play calls? The first one, fourth and inches. Ender on the Tyreek Hill, loss of two yards. The second one, sweep read option, where it was one of those inverted read options where both guys are going this way, both guys are going this way, and they got to make a decision if it's a handoff to H-N or Huntley keeps it and runs up the middle. Where he gave it to H-N, loss of two. Like, 
Why are we going east-west on fourth and inches, fourth and one? North-south. you got to pick up a yard. Stop with the horizontal bullshit, Mike. Like, seriously. And that's just not even an issue for just fourth downs, by the way. The Miami Dolphins, as a whole, goes way too much on the perimeter rather than going up the middle. The objective is to go that way. Not that way, but they continue to go east-west. It's so frustrating. What The majority of the rushes for Devon A. Chan in this running attack is to the tackles on the outside. Run the ball up the middle at some point, Mike. Coming into week four, you average 4.6 yards per carry on runs up the middle. It was 13th in the NFL. Maybe you should try to do that more often rather than running on the perimeter where you rank in the 20. It's just embarrassing to see what Mike McDaniel has been doing as a play caller. So what is the solution? Well, I'm not sure if there is one, if we're going to be honest, but I'd love to at least experiment. Mike McDaniel said everything's on the table in terms of trying to improve this offense. Well, prove it to me. Give Frank Smith a shot. He's your offensive coordinator. Why not let him play, call plays? He hasn't called plays since being in Miami. It's been Mike McDaniel the entire time. But with how bad it has been through the first four weeks of the season, they've scored, what is it, 42 points for the entire season. Through four games, 42 points. They're the only team in the National Football League that is yet to hold a lead at any point in a football game. It's been 16 quarters. They have never held a lead. They're lucky Jason Sanders made a game-winning field goal as time expired. This would be even worse. I'd love to see what Frank Smith can bring to the table as a play caller and let Mike McDaniel focus on managing and leading this team on a weekly basis and not have to worry about play calling on Sundays. It's been a disaster so far, and i got to be honest, I'd like to see it change. The next overreaction, fire Chris Greer. Four things. Should happen. It's happening. Whatever you want to say, but I was wrong. I was. I, I simply was wrong, and, and I want to apologize to all the Dolphins fans out there because some of you said that Chris Greer should go. Some of you said that this roster isn't good. I thought it was a good roster, but I'm a good enough man to admit when I was wrong. Coming into the year, I liked the build of this team. I liked the wide receivers. I liked the running backs, quarterbacks, corners, safeties, linebackers, edge rushers. I liked it all. I didn't like the offensive line, but I liked everything else. Evidently, this is just not a good ball club, and I think Chris Greer might have to go by the end of the season. And we'll talk about his mistakes coming up in just a second. But we are sponsored by Game Time, and it's never a mistake when you get started with Game Time because they are the best way to get your tickets. They have the lowest price guaranteed, and they specialize in last-minute tickets, especially when they have a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Another really awesome feature they have is all-in prices. When you toggle this feature, it shows, shows the total number of your ticket in terms of price up front rather than getting surprised by fees at checkout. There's nothing worse than thinking a ticket 60 bucks and ultimately is $100, $120 when you get blindsided by those fees at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Shout out to Game Time for sponsoring today's show. Everybody here at Chat Sports uses them to get their tickets. I did when I went to LSU USC uh, about a month ago. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. All right, when we look at Chris Greer here and the mistakes that he's made, not o only over the past six years or eight years or how long ever it's been, but since 2016, how crazy is it to that he's been the GM since 2016? But just in the last 365, some of his mistakes. Number one, not addressing the O-line. Going into the season with Liam Eikenberg, Robert Jones, and Aaron Brewer as your interior. Not great. Austin Jackson has not been good to start the season. Teron Armstead can't stay healthy. And I'm actually curious, by the way, this is one thing. I don't remember being that upset with Patrick Paul, the second-round pick out of Houston, who started last night in replacing a replacement of Teron Armstead. I'll be curious to rewatch that film and see how he performed because I do think he's the left tackle of the future, and I am curious to see if he's one of the few bright spots from yesterday's game, but not addressing O-line. And I'd love to go back and read some of the comments on people who got upset at me for not being happy with the Chop Robinson pick at 21st overall in the 2024 NFL Draft. I gave it a C-plus grade initially um, on draft night. Why did I give it a C-plus? Because I wanted them to take Graham Barton, the interior offensive lineman from Duke, who's been performing extremely well for Tampa Bay, by the way. Think that wouldn't have helped right now? Yeah, I think it would have. Number two, not having a real backup quarterback. It's been embarrassing. 
we've seen Joe Flacco go out there and ball for Indianapolis in the middle of a game. Threw two touchdowns and 168 yards this past Sunday after Anthony Richardson got hurt in the first half. Is it that hard to have a real backup quarterback? Like, is this on Mike? Is this on Chris? Is it if on Mike telling Chris that he's okay with Skyler as the backup? Because that guy stinks. Have a real backup quarterback. Knowing that your starter, Tua, has an injury history and could go down, why would you not put a premium on having a very good backup? That's just malpractice from Chris Greer and Mike McDaniel. Number three, not having a Christian Wilkins replacement. And I think Zach Sealer and Calais Campbell have actually been one of the few bright spots on this team as both of them have made really good plays. But not having a true nose tackle run-stopping guy up the middle has hurt this ball club. It has. They gave up 120 yards last week. They gave up 100 yards to the Seattle Seahawks through the ground. They just have not been good in their run department. But the defense isn't even really the problem right now for Miami. I actually think they've been really fine through the season. They just have not had any help. Offense hasn't been able to sustain drives. And the defense has been on the field the entire game trying to bow out the offense and take risks, trying to get great turnovers. So I can't even blame Anthony Weaver and the defense. And I'll tell you this, folks. If the season continues the way it's going right now, the Dolphins are 1-3. and three. If they lose the next couple of games, they're 1-6, and 1-7. and seven. They should absolutely trade everyone, not everyone, but trade some of their veteran pieces at the deadline if they get adequate offers, and they should fire Chris Greer after the season and let the new GM that they ultimately hire decide what to do with head coach Mike McDaniel. That's why I give Mike McDaniel two fins on potentially getting fired and Chris Greer being four time for Chris to go. This build ultimately is not going to result in a championship. At least that's what it looks like right now. You make the call, though. Should Chris Greer be fired? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Next overreaction. Is the season over? I'm going to give it three fits. I'm going to give it three fits. So it, it's close, but it's likely. But uh, I don't think it's over completely right now. And I wish I could quit on this team. And, I, and I've been very pessimistic in this video. I've been very open about my disgust with Mike McDaniel and Chris Greer through the first 10 minutes of this episode. But it's not, it's not fully over. It just simply isn't. It's trending that way, but it's not. Because when you think about the next four weeks in Miami, you know this. They travel to New England this season. Patriots are a horrible ball club. Then you have a week six bye. So if you come off, you get that win, you're two and three. You get two weeks to prepare for an Indianapolis Colts team that is also not very good. Win that game, well, guess what? You're now three and three. And then guess what? Tua Tungavaloa is able to return in week eight at home against the Arizona Cardinals. Win that game, you're four and three. Season's not over at that point. That's actually very much alive. So unfortunately, the season is not over. Um, the team looks dead. But if they're able to get picked up off the canvas, win this week in New England, have a bye week, regroup, get Odell Beckham Jr. back, Bradley Chubb returning soon, Go to Indianapolis, win coming out of a bye, and then you get two to return and win that game at home against a bad Cardinals team. You're 3-0, and and you're looking pretty good. I'll say this, though. You don't go 3-0. The season is, in fact, over. But I'm not going to call it dead completely just yet, but we're very, very close. Before we get out of here, I do want to appreciate everyone who watched today's show and the new subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit that sub button. We're 607 subscribers until 62K. We crossed 61K on our watch party Monday night. Appreciate all the real ones, specifically Chad Jones and Barry B. My two boys are absolute legends, real ones. Appreciate y'all helping us grow here at the channel and all the new subscribers. Hopefully, if you're not subscribed, you join the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow with a live, or not tomorrow, but later on today with a live show. See you there. Thank you.